Hello, I'm Maiden Nyman, and we're at the stairway that comes up to the high school, just like this is the first segment, a stairway to the first episode of Sagas. Our first story is a compelling one, talking about the importance of masks and how students feel about them. Hi, my name is Zoe, and this story is going to be about how students and staff feel about wearing masks. I like them, but at the same time I don't because it protects us from getting COVID, but at the same time it's hard to understand people. Um, I really dislike them because it gives me shortness of breath and it makes my heart race a, a lot. I think they help, but to me they're annoying because for people with glasses they fog up and stuff, but I do think that they help. So I think masks are the right precaution even if they don't uh, prevent everything or uh, even if they don't have the highest success rate, I think it's the best we can do in this situation. So there are a few students who definitely get frustrated with them, but it seems to me that they understand why we need to wear them. And uh, if I give them just, you know, a subtle reminder that they need to put them on, they'll usually follow without much of an issue. Well, my feeling about masks have always been that they're kind of our simplest way to deal with a difficult problem. Um, I can't say that I would say I like wearing masks, but I totally accept the fact that uh, the best science indicates that it's the best way to stop the spread of the COVID, COVID virus in a simple way. And that the old saying of that my mask pr protects you and your mask protects me seems to be um, pretty relevant. Yeah, so I've been pretty happy with um, students overall, what I've seen at SHS. There are, are a fair number of people, I think, that are wearing their masks below their nose, which, by the way, is considered like the, one of the worst ways to wear them because you're going you're gonna to inhale a lot more through your nose than you are through your mouth and like mouth in like a regular time because you keep your mouth closed a lot of times, but your nostrils stay open. So wear your mask correctly, keep them over your nose. And I think, though, that most people have been pretty good about it, so I'm pretty happy with the way our students have responded. I was going to talk about um, how to correctly wear a mask. You need to make sure that your, mouth, your mask covers your, your face correctly. So it needs to be over the bridge of your nose and goes all the way under your chin. It needs to be loose fitting, but it still needs to be secure enough to stay in place. You need to make sure that you can talk with your mask on, that it doesn't irritate you. That way you're not tempted to touch it or pull it out. If you, if you do that, you risk touching your face and also it limits the effectiveness of the mask. Also, we wanna talk about what the masks are doing. They are helping to prevent the spread of COVID-19. So it's impossible to know who all has COVID-19 because some people don't have symptoms. So the best practice is to wear a mask. Even if you think you're healthy, it helps contain the small droplets. And if you sneeze, when you talk, when you cough. Also, if you are healthy, then it just helps protect you from the people around you. Now that concludes the SVTV Saga's mask story. Now I wanna give a huge thanks to all the staff, faculty, and students that remind everyone to keep their mask on above their nose, even while talking. Stay safe, everyone. My name is Zoe, and this story is going to be about how golf has been affected by COVID-19. We've had to take certain precautions within our actual gameplay, so we aren't supposed to pull the pin anymore. Um, Signing scorecards at the end of a round is a little different, as well as going out to holes, like we can't really ride in the carts because we have to stay distance. So that's been a little different. But the, one of the biggest differences I think would be, we don't have like award ceremonies at the end of our like meets and tournaments. So we don't get like, there's no ceremony of handing out medals, which is kind of stinky. But. It really didn't affect us that much honestly motivated us more, I think, to get out and play because we didn't have any, we didn't have much else to do. We, when we're on the green, we're all supposed to stay six feet, like, farther apart. We can't touch the pin. We've done, like, continuous putting. So, usually it's, like, whoever's farthest from the pin putts first, and then, like, you work your way in. So, at a few tournaments, what we've done is the person who's farthest from the hole starts putting and then they putt till they finish and then that prevents people from like congregating around the hole. Yeah. 
really hasn't affected our game too much. We're still being careful, but it hasn't hindered the ability to play the game at all. They're only allowing three teams from the re from each regional, the top three teams from each regional get to go to state, whereas it would be four without COVID, but they're trying to keep the, keep the numbers down. So it's gonna to be tougher to get to state, but I'm hopeful that we can have a good day. Hi, I'm Otto Brown, and the next story is gonna be about how students fought the gloominess of quarantine and what they did to stay away from the media. Um, I play a lot of Minecraft with my boy Kyle. I read, I read a lot and lots of books. And then I watched Netflix a lot. That was kind of it. Um, I pretty much just did my normal stuff, which is uh, work on our deer farm and um, just hang out. I didn't feel much because my life didn't really change because most of the stuff I do is at home. Um, I mean, I wanted to go hang out with my friends, but pretty much that's it. Uh, I spent a lot of time with family and I volunteered at the zoo with my grandpa like I do every year. Uh, really, I just spent a lot of time with baseball. Did a lot of work with that, with friends or teammates, I guess. I fished a lot and I worked out a lot. And that's really all. Uh, played sports, went to basketball tournaments when the stuff opened, uh, went to weights and conditioning. That's mainly about it. I hung out with my friends, played baseball, and was inside a lot. Hang out with friends, and that's about it. Played video games, watched Netflix. Um, FaceTime people a lot, hung out with my friends, danced, just chilled. Uh, I just mind my own business. Like, I didn't really get on my phone all that much because I don't like looking at that stuff. Uh, I just don't pay attention to it. Uh, stayed off electronics, really. Basically, just didn't get on my phone, tried to avoid all the news and stuff, because that's basically what all COVID was. It was just, yeah. Um, I tried to not listen to my parents because they constantly talked about it, but I just didn't really pay attention. Um, nothing really. Trying to wear this thing, basically. Uh, trying to avoid people six feet apart. That's about it. Hey, I'm Kyle Adams, and your next story is Man on the Street. We asked some of your fellow classmates what they thought about online learning and if they feel safe going back to school full time. Hi, my name is Autumn, and this story is going to be about how hybrid learning has affected us as students, staff, and faculty, and if we think it's safe to go back to full on-site learning. Yeah, I would like to go back to full time because I like being with everyone and being with my friends rather than being at home. I think that I struggle with the online school and so I feel like a lot of people struggle with it and so being back in the school is going to make it easier to stay caught up in school and stuff. It's kind of nervous, like I'm nervous about it. It's definitely not something I want to do. Part of me definitely wants to see everybody again but I don't want to risk that. I don't want to get sick. I don't want other people to get sick. I want that to happen. I, I can't do the online days. I need it to be all in person. It's helpful. It definitely makes me feel a lot safer knowing that I can work at home, do stuff, not have everybody around me, but there are times where you like miss out on something or you don't get a notification and then you mess up on something and you can't just say, hey teacher, like, because they're not there. So it's nice, but at the same time, it's confusing at times. I think online school is stressful and like hard to keep up with everything. Uh, going back to school, it's nice. I wish there wasn't uh, half and half on computer and school itself. I wish it could just be at school. Yeah, so it's, I, I would say things are challenging for sure. Um, one of the things I would say is that some of the things I feel like I'm best at was like, you know, talking to people kind of one-on-one -on -one and discussing things in a personal way and asking questions to like challenge people and then building off of those questions that people ask or their responses. It's a lot tougher with um, a hybrid kind of setting where you've got half your class you're trying to engage at home and half the class that you're trying to engage 
in class. And then, you know, for example, I've got one class where on some days I have two people in class and 16 at home. And so it, it's, it's a challenge for sure. Um, and it, it is kind of time consuming, you know, trying to get everything online where people need to have access to it. And so that does take, take time to get all that um, put on Schoology and make it prepared. Now that concludes our SVTV Saga's hybrid and remote learning story. Thank you to all the staff and students for continuing to work hard during these troubling times. Hi, I'm back and for your last story of SVTV Saga's, it's going to be about how Coach O'Neill and his team have been keeping up with cleaning and social distancing guidelines. COVID-19 has impacted many things at Seaman High School, one thing being sports. We went to talk to Coach O'Neill, Reed Callen, and Nathan Zephyrson to see how they are handling things. Uh, I mean, if, if you date back to last summer, I mean, this is kind of basically when we, we started our procedures, you know, with, uh, you know, try, trying to keep everybody safe. And, you know, we, we kind of sat down, Coach Lincoln and myself, you know, for the weight room and for what we we're going to do over the summer conditioning and come up with a set of guidelines and then pass it through the administration. A lot of it was, you know, through KSHA as far as, you know, what their guidelines were, you know, social distancing, you know, make sure we're cleaning everything after workouts, making sure that, you know, we, we have our own water bottles. And w w with that, taken place before this season when it just basically carried on into the football season and, and practice and of course you know in football you cannot social distance very well but at the same time if you take the procedures you know to wash as soon as practice is over you know we, we take our practice clothes home every single day we, we get our helmets and shoulders pads sanitized after after every practice you know that this has kind of helped us uh, maintain a level of uh, consistency with, with our safety that's been pre pretty good so far. Reed told us a little bit about how spacing and practice has been different. The guys inside and half outside on the on the track doing conditioning, so it affected us in that aspect. And then um, it affected, uh, I mean, mostly just our summer. We we normally, you know, play against other teams in seven on seven and stuff. We couldn't do that, you know, because some other teams got caught with some stuff. But I mean, the fans, it's it's affected the games, you know, with not a lot of people being able to come, but. With just like the playing football, it hasn't it hasn't affected us a ton. I mean, locker room's a little different, but other than that, it's you know it's just football. The, the major changes in game is is probably more with the crowd than it is with with the teams. You, you know, as far as you know, the crowd at, at home, you know, we, we get limited to you know 500 people, and you know that also includes you know the football teams. You, on the sidelines, you know, we're we're supposed to social distance and, and keep our guys spread out. That they changed one of the rules instead of going from the 25 to the 25 with the players. You know, the players can go from the 10 to the 10, which you know, because of limited roster, you know, size, it, that that's that's plenty of space. You know, so it's not a whole lot of change between the lines, but outside the other by you know, most of our guys. Um, as a team, I think I think this whole year so far, even going into the first week, I think we're all very confident because this year's energy has felt a lot different than all my other years. I'm not sure if that's just because I'm a senior, but I haven't since. I've been playing in six, or I mean, since I started tackle football, I haven't been with a group of kids who's more like who plays more as a team, who like like is so unselfish that all they care about is getting the win and getting the win for their team. No one's mad at the game after the game, you know, about their own you know efforts or anything like that. It's all about oh, I messed up this play, so then the team almost lost the game, or or you know, we won as a team. I played horrible, but I mean, hey, we we got the win, so that's all I care about. And it's just a lot of people, you know, take, like if you can find a, a group of guys who like that, I'd, I'd be very surprised because I think we're the we're one of the best teams in the state and we, we play together like that. So. And this is the end of the first episode of Sagas. We learned, we lived, and we laughed. We saw the importance of masks. We uh, took a dive into what people did during quarantine, and we even saw how the sports teams handled this virus. I'm Aiden Nyman, and we'll see you next time.